This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. Former anti-red tape authority director General Jeremiah Belgica was found guilty of grave misconduct by the office of the ombudsman over a complaint filed by DITO Telecommunity Incorporated. The ruling recently released to the public but signed by ombudsman Samuel Martires on the 3rd of March, 2023, also found former deputy director General Eduardo Bringas, division chief Cheryl Pura Sumagit, director Jedrican and director Melamy Salvadora. As per in guilty of grave misconduct, the order, dated the 25th of October, 2022, stemmed from DITO Chief Administrative Officer Abel Tamano's complaint accusing the former ARTA officials of violating Republic Act No. 3018 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. In 2021, the ex-officials reportedly issued a resolution and an order of automatic approval ordering the assignment of frequencies by the National Telecommunications Commission to Now Telecom Company, incorporated as the third major player in the telecommunications industry. But on the 20th of September, 2018, the NTC issued a memorandum circular for the selection process for the new major player and DITO was apparently the only company that participated and was eventually selected. Now filed on the 18th of May, 2020 a complaint against then NTC Commissioner Gamaliel Cordoba before the ARTA for the automatic approval of its requests for frequency assignment already assigned to DITO the clear intent to violate the law by respondents was evident. When they issued the assailed March 1, 2021 ARTA resolution and OAA assigning frequencies to Nowtel despite being aware beforehand of the following information gathered through the pleadings filed by the NTC, Communications Cordoba, and DITO, the decision read, the Ombudsman noted that then Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara also set aside the order of automatic approval that ARTA had issued. The ombudsman said the former officials should pay a fine equal to their salary for one year if the dismissal can no longer be enforced due to separation from service. The office also ruled that they will be given accessory penalties of cancellation of civil service eligibility, forfeiture of retirement benefits and perpetual disqualification to hold public office. Cebu Province purchased 34 sets of chainsaw worth 681,780 pesos in 2021 for clearing operations in the aftermath of Typhoon Odette but they have not been registered with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources in violation of the law, the Commission on Audit said, in its 2022 annual audit report. COA said the failure of the Cebu provincial government to register and to secure the needed permit violates Section 5 of Republic Act No. 9175, the Chainsaw Act of 2002. It said that RA 9175 provides that government agencies that use chainsaws must secure the necessary permit from the DENR before operating the equipment. It also said the permits are needed to ensure that the chainsaws will not be used in illegal logging or unauthorized clearing of forests. State auditors said that the chainsaws were paid for in cash and were later reimbursed out of the government's general fund. When asked for explanation, COA said that the Cebu Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office reasoned that they did not apply for registration because the purpose of the chainsaws was for clearing operations due to Typhoon Odette. Cebu's PDRRM cited RA-10121, the Philippine Disaster and Management Act, which reportedly provided an exemption for chainsaws bought for disaster operations. But COA said, while the purpose of the purchase of these 34 units of chainsaw is for disaster response, neither RA-9175 nor RA-10121 provides for the exception for registration. The audit team understands the urgency of the clearing operations after the onslaught of Typhoon Odette which struck the region on the 20th of December 21 but now that the situation has already settled, there are no more impediments to have the 34 units of chainsaw registered with DENR so as to comply with the requirement of RA 9175 and contribute to the attainment of the objective of the state to regulate the ownership, possession, sale importation and use of chainsaws to prevent the same from being used in illegal logging and unauthorized clearing of forests, it said. It reminded Cebu province to register and secure the permits for the chainsaws from the DENR, otherwise, the responsible public officer might have to face penalties under section 7 of RA number 9175. 
which include removal from office and perpetual disqualification from holding public office. A barangay chairman gunned down a drinking buddy in barangay Talahiban, Oquendo District, Calbayog City, Samar on the 27th of July. Police identified the victim as Jason Leoan Perilla, 41, farmer, from Puruk 2, Barangay Tigb, Calbayog. Initial investigation disclosed that the victim and suspect, Joseph Bello, 43, chairman of Barangay Talahiban, and four companions, Tiburcio Paleoc, Ramil Penzulo, Michael Ande, and alias Joey, were having a drinking session in Bello's house. The victim and suspect engaged in a heated argument and Bello went into the kitchen. Bello appeared with a gun and shot Perilla in the back, killing him on the spot. Their companions scampered to directions and Bello fled to an unknown direction. The Calbayog Police Forensics Unit recovered three fired cartridge cases for a 45 caliber pistol in the crime scene. A former village chair active in the Bangsamoro Peace Building and his son were killed in an ambush on Sunday evening in a remote village here, police said. Lieutenant Colonel Arneel Milokatones, Matalim Town Police Chief, said Anwar Ebrahim Salem, 52, and his son, Anwar Salem Jr., 21, both residents of Barangay Arakan here, were heading home when they were ambushed in Sishio Lambayao, Barangay Kibir at 6 p.m. on Sunday, the 30th of July. The father, a member of the Bangsamoro Council of Elders who helped settle local disputes and Rido, family feud, involving Moro families here, was killed on the spot while his son died while being treated in the hospital. Salem Senior, a former village chair of Barangay Arakan, used to serve as president of the Association of Barangay Chairperson and sat as an ex-officio member of the Municipal Council. The Commission on Audit has flagged the Metropolitan Cebu Water District for seven unfinished and overdue infrastructure projects with a total contract cost of 235.880 million pesos. In its 20 December 22 annual audit report published on its official website, COA said these projects are either due for termination, not yet started, suspended, ongoing, or completed but incurring significant delays ranging from 45 days to 8 years. Thus, government funds were either tied up on the unimplemented, uncompleted, and delayed projects and deprived the concessionaires of the benefits that could have been derived from the immediate use therefrom, the state auditor said. These projects, COA, stated were started as early as 2013 and awarded to different contractors. Three projects with a total contract cost of 63 million and 12,002 pesos were for termination due to various issues. Some of these projects are also still in the planning stages, with delays of 3 to 8 years. The state auditor said these projects include the Mactan Water System Improvement Program Package 3 with a project cost of 52.6 million pesos. Aside from lacking required permits from the Department of Public Works and Highways, this project was stopped due to various modifications which, COA said resulted in significant variation orders that may go beyond the limit set by the law on procurement. COA said the water district already made payments amounting to 18,957,680 pesos on the advance payment or mobilization fee and progress billing of these projects, 8,571,814 pesos of which covers the mobilization fee. The advance payments mobilization fee totaling 8,571,814 pesos were not recovered by MCWD. The failure to recover the mobilization fee granted for the above mentioned cancelled terminated projects deprived the agency of the use of the said funds. COA report reads, moreover, COA noted four other projects that were not completed within their contract period. These projects have a total contract cost of 172.868 million pesos. Of the four infrastructure projects, two were completed but with delays ranging from 45 to 964 calendar days. The state auditor said contractors of these projects have been subjected to liquidated damages, except for projects contracted by JFAP Construction Optimus Engineering and Construction Joint Venture and Petrina Construction and General Merchandising which incurred delays of 48 days and 444 days, respectively. 
COA recommended that MCWD intensify its regular monitoring and supervision to ensure its timely completion and to demand immediate refund of mobilization fees released to contractors. The state auditor also urged the Water District to ensure collection of the liquidated damages for delayed projects. Mayor Alfredo Abelardo Albi Benitez revealed on Tuesday, the 1st of August, that 46 city government personnel tested positive for illegal drug use. Benitez said they comprise 8 to 10 percent of job order city government employees. 29 were from the Bacolod Traffic Authority Office and 17 from the Public Order and Safety Office. A total of 370 POSO personnel and 270 BTAO personnel underwent drug testing from the 28th of July to the 1st of August. In a press conference, Benito said that those who tested positive for illegal substance will be terminated and undergo rehabilitation. If they turned out to be better and can recover, then they may be reconsidered, he added. Benito said they will check what kind of assistance the city can extend to them. He said all city government employees will undergo public testing. Maybe this will be a call for all public officials to do the same, he added. Benito said they will come up with a system to identify employees using or engaging in illegal substance. He, however, isn't sure if it is allowed or illegal to make this mandatory, but, ideally, everybody should undergo that cause, he said. Benitez noted that the drug testing is proper to enable the public to have confidence that government servants are not involved in illegal substance. Excessive expenses on training summits and domestic travel by the National Youth Commission have been questioned by state auditors, which noted a massive jump in these expenditures from 2021 to 2022. In its annual audit report on the NYC for 2022, the Commission on Audit flagged the agency's excessive payment of hotel room reservations, as well as the incomplete documents of disbursements. According to the COA, the local accounts of NYC showed that its training expenses amounted to 31.4 million pesos, while travel expenses reached 5.43 million pesos. These could not be ascertained, the COA said. The COA said that NYC's local travel expenses jumped by 321% from 1.29 million pesos in 2021 to 5.43 million pesos in 2022. Training expenses, on the other hand, surged by 575% from 4.65 million pesos to 31.4 million pesos during the same period. Auditors also said there was a lack of proper planning in NYC's various activities resulting in the excessive payments for hotel reservations amounting to 1.28 million pesos. There were also disbursements worth 675,842 pesos, which were processed and paid without complete documentation. From the COA's observations, the activities had meals, room and venue reservations more than the actual participants, hence the excess of reasonable limits. But the NYC justified the hotel room reservations, saying, among others, that some summer participants were assigned rooms but did not show up, some confirmed their attendance but did not push through for personal reasons, some tested positive for COVID-19, and some booked other hotel accommodations because they had companions. Although plausible, the above-mentioned justifications could not be validated and accounted for since these were unsubstantiated for lack of proof such as medical records and letters from the participants, the COA said. It also pointed out that the NYC could have avoided these excessive and unnecessary costs of unutilized accommodations had they adequately planned its activities and required the participants to pay for the unutilized reserved rooms. COA also observed the improper processing of travel expenses amounting to 72,272 pesos as the disbursement vouchers did not bear the approval of the proper officials. Audit of these vouchers also showed that the payee was also the person who certified the disbursement. The COA said these transactions bypassed the appropriate disbursement controls, which may result in abuse of power and pecuniary loss for the government. Ombudsman Samuel Martires has ordered the preventive suspension pending investigation of five officials of the Department of Agriculture and the Food Terminal Incorporated over alleged irregularities in the procurement of onions later sold at Kadiwa stores. Suspended pending the results of the investigation are DA Assistant Secretary Christine Evangelista, DA Administrative Officer Eunice Biblanius, DA Officer in Charge Chief Accountant Lolita Jamela. 
FTI Vice President for Operations John Gabriel Benedict Trinidad III and FTI Budget Division Head Juanita Lualhati, in a four-page order dated 1 August, Martyr said the respondents are being charged with grave misconduct, gross neglect of duty and conduct prejudicial to the best interest of service in connection with the shortage of supply of onions in the Philippine markets. Its price manipulation and the questionable procurement of onions by FTI from Benina Multipurpose Cooperative. Specifically, he noted that violations of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act in relation to the Procurement Act were allegedly committed when the DA entered into a memorandum of agreement with the FTI for the procurement of onions for the Kadua Food Hub project. FTI, in turn entered into a letter of agreement with Benina Multipurpose Cooperative for the delivery of 8,845 bags, about 247 metric tons of onions. Among alleged violations were the lack of parameters in the selection of cooperative that will supply and deliver the onions, questionable advance payment of 50% of the contract price, non-compliance of the memorandum of agreement, partial implementation of the contract and doubtful deliveries by the cooperative. According to Martyrs, it appears that the evidence of guilt of respondents Evangelista, Bablanius, Jamela, Trinidad III and Luol Hati is strong and the charges against them involve grave misconduct and gross neglect of duty which may warrant their removal from the service, the Ombudsman's order stated, considering further that respondents' continued stay in the office may influence potential witnesses and may prejudice the case filed against them due to their continued access to documentary evidence relative thereto. This office exercises its power to place respondents under preventive suspension, it added. The five officials have been placed under preventive suspension without pay for the duration of the proceedings, but not exceeding six months. The Commission on Audit has flagged the Bureau of Corrections over its irregular 36.869 million pesos food subsistence for persons deprived of liberty in its Davo prison and penal farm in 2022. In its annual audit report, the COA cited its circular number 2012-003 which defined what irregular, unnecessary, excessive, extravagant, and unconscionable expenditures are. COA pointed out that irregular expenditures are made when there is no observance of an established pattern, course, and mode of action, behavior, or conduct in the incurrence of an irregular expenditure. It said that when its audit team reviewed the January to the 20th of March 22 food subsistence transactions, it discovered that Bukor paid Aurora F. Sumilong Eatery the amounts of 12,716,756 pesos, 11,618,626 pesos, and 12,533,391 pesos. The disbursements were made in the absence of any bidding process or through alternative methods of procurement, COA said. The only basis was the notice of extension of contract dated the 20th of December, 2021 addressed to AFS Eatery notifying them that the 2021 FSA is extended for the period of the 1st of January to the 31st of March, 2022. It was signed by Undersecretary Gerald Cuban Tag, Director General of the Bucor being then the head of procuring entity of the agency since procurement is centralized. But COA said the extension of contract indicates irregularity since it did not adhere to established rules, regulations, and practices on public bidding or alternative methods of procurement, it said. Therefore, it is clear that the extension of contract is irregular because it is without legal basis due to absence of any authority to do so. The apparent disregard of the provisions of COA Circular No. 2012-003 particularly in the payment of expenses in the absence of legal basis or authority, costs doubt as to the validity and propriety of expenditures which can be subject to audit disallowances. COA then advised Bucor management to stop extending contracts in the future, especially when done without legal basis. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.